it is late. Well, it's actually really not that late. It's like 6.50, 6.50, coming home from work. This is later than I usually come home from work, but uh, we are in the midst of college application season. I've got uh, a few students who are uh, writing English essays for their college applications because they want to uh, go to an international school or they want to study English or what, one reason or another. So I stayed late to, uh, to help them with their college essays a bit. Um, it's actually like kind of amazing to think about, you know, when I think about the last job that I had in Toyama where I was teaching junior high school students who who could barely hold a conversation um, you know even the best kids that I had could like barely hold their own in a conversation now I'm I'm <laughs> correcting college essays completely in English that are like really fascinating essays about the refugee crisis or you know uh, the difference in the education systems between Canada and uh, and Japan it's like it's incredible um, so I'm like I have a lot of respect for these kids and uh, you know it's <laughs> I, I'm I just can't believe that I, I'm teaching kids that are, are this good um, but anyways uh, it's time for uh, another, another, uh, this is really like the first real Coyote Michi video, I guess. Um, but first of all, thank you all for sending me questions. That was really awesome. I apologize that it's dark. It's, it's not always going to be this dark, but it's, uh, starting to get into winter now. So, uh, the sun is, uh, well, not winter, but it's no longer summer. So the sun is going down earlier and earlier. Um, so anyways without further ado I guess uh, we'll start to get to the questions um, because it's dark I, I can see that the focus is going in and out on my face and it does that a lot normally but I think especially now because it's dark that's gonna happen so uh, just I'm sorry <laughs> just deal with it um, but uh, so I'm just gonna go through here um, I got a lot of questions there's no way I'm gonna get through them all today but I'll just start going through them and we'll see how far we get, okay? So, um, the Grunt Kings, let's see. Uh, the Grunt Kings said, I'd love to know your favorite childhood memory and or what got you into vlogging? Well, thank you, the Grunt Kings. Um, my favorite childhood memory, that's tough. I have a lot of good childhood memories. I don't really know if I have a favorite, like, you know, it's it's funny, the bad memories always seem to stick out more than the good ones, right? Like, um, gosh, favorite childhood memory. I had a lot of good memories. As a family, we used to take um, family vacations every year. We went to Vail, Colorado to, uh, to go skiing every winter. Um, for like 10 years we did that, and it was awesome. I loved those trips. Um, those were really fun. Uh, like one of my earliest memories that's not really like a memory you know how like your really early memories are just kind of like snapshots and they're just kind of feelings a lot more than like concrete memories I have this early memory of the first house that we lived in that, or that I lived in when I was born um, we only lived there for a few years but this house um, it had this spiral staircase I, I don't really remember it that that much, but I just remember really loving that spiral staircase for some reason. I guess just because I thought it was cool that we had a spiral staircase in our house, because it's kind of unusual. So I, I really liked just kind of, I think I ran up and down it a lot for no reason at all. <laughs> um, so I guess that's kind of a, a favorite childhood memory. Um, so what got me into vlogging? That I can answer a little more concretely. Um, so I've always been interested in filmmaking, as I, as I said before. Um, I've always been really enamored with movies in general um, since I was a kid. And, I, and uh, as I became older and, and started to realize that, oh, these movies that I love, there's like tons of people that work really hard to make them. And there's a whole lot behind the scenes that happens that, I, that you never really think about as a kid. Um, you know, uh, 
since then I, I started to become more and more interested in the actual craft of how a movie gets made and um, you know as I uh, got older like I've always wanted to kind of make a movie um, problems with that is that first of all I am a I'm not a good writer. I, you know, sometimes I can turn out something good, but I just don't, I, I'm not a good writer. It's not my forte. Um, I, I, I enjoy movies and I, I would like to shoot movies, but I can't write one. So I need someone else to write it for me. So it's hard to, it's hard for me to make a movie on my own when I don't have a story or, and I can't make a story. Um, so that's a problem. So vlogs, Obviously, there's there's no <laughs> there's no writing being done. It's my life, so it's just uh, it's purely the the actual filming, without any of the writing that goes into making a, a movie, a narrative movie. Um, so you know that appeals to me. But what really actually triggered it is you know Casey Neistat, um, you know one of the most famous YouTubers in the world right now, I think. Um, he started doing daily vlogs last year uh, in the spring, and I started to watch his vlogs, and I was like, first of all, the man's incredible. He changed the game for vlogging. I mean, it's, it, he, he did stuff with vlogging that no one had ever done before, and so um, that really grabbed my attention right away. And, and then I started to think, it, like, I, I had never really thought of vlogging as kind of, uh, how can I say this, I'd never really taken it seriously, I guess, before I saw him, but um, after watching his videos for a couple of months, I was like, oh, okay, this is like a serious thing, and this could, I mean, uh, God, the focus. His vlogs really started to make me think like, oh, this could actually be something serious, and, and you know, it's something, if I approach it with the the level of professionalism of an actual filmmaker then it could be something that's really worthwhile for me um, to do and to practice you know simple camera uh, techniques and framing and things like that things that would be important if I was going to ever make a, a film um, so and of editing of course that's another big thing um, so yeah th that's pretty much why I started is the interest in filmmaking is kind of the basis and then what really pushed me to actually start doing it was uh, Casey Neistat's vlogs. He's an inspiration and you know uh, I think those of you who watch his vlogs or have seen his vlogs um, will, will know already that my style is very heavily influenced by him. Um, and uh, but uh, if you've never seen one of his vlogs, go go check him out. I mean, he's he's incredible. Um, he's he's the best in the world, really. Um, okay, next one, next question. Thank you, the Grunt Kings, for your question. Next, uh, let's see. David Sharara. When I visited Japan, I noticed that the people in Kyoto and Osaka are so different from Tokyo, they are more energetic. Can you see this in the local culture? Uh, thank you, David. And um, you know what, that is absolutely, uh, well, I want to say that's absolutely true. Um, I don't know if it's completely true, actually, in, in practice, but um, that is definitely true that people are thought to be more energetic and outgoing in this region. So like the Kyoto and Osaka uh, region and the surrounding area, it's all called Kansai. So this is the Kansai region of Japan. And Kansai people are generally thought, even by Japanese people, to be kind of the most uh, energetic, outgoing, uh, funny people. Um, a lot, a lot of comedians originate from this region, like they come from this area. I, I don't know how that got started. I mean, it is definitely true that people in this area are energetic and fun and outgoing, but I don't know if they're necessarily more so than anywhere else in Japan. I don't know why that image got started. Um, you know, it might be true. Uh, the funny thing, actually, Kyoto, I think, is a little bit different, and I have noticed that, and that's one thing that, um, it's weird, but 
back in Toyama, before I moved here, right before I moved here, when I was telling all of my Japanese friends that live in Toyama that I was moving to Kyoto, one of the first things that they said to me or was like, oh, Kyoto people are kind of difficult. I, I, like, many people said this to me and I, I kept thinking like, what does that mean? What, what is difficult? What are you talking about? And they, I think they just mean like, Kyoto people have a certain sense of pride and, and they're a little bit um, not as welcoming, I think is what they were trying to say. Um, you know, I think part of that is just because there's so many tourists that come here. This is, it's got to be, I mean, maybe the number one or number two tourist destination in Japan. Um, I think just because there's so many tourists, maybe they get a little bit standoffish towards outsiders just because it, it gets so crowded from all the tourists. Uh, and by the way, when I say tourists, I don't mean only foreign tourists. This is also like a huge tourist destination just for Japanese people to come visit. So it's like they're dealing with people from all over, all the time. Um, and, you know, maybe that can get frustrating. I don't, I don't really know what it is, but uh, for some reason they think Kyoto people are a little difficult, but that is separate from Kansai, from Osaka and people from Kobe and other areas around here. Um, they still have that image of being very, very outgoing and whatnot. Um, yeah, I, I think it's true to a certain extent, but I don't know if it's really that true. That's, that's my thoughts. And, uh, you know, this just comes from living here for how long have I lived here? <laughs> Uh, like half a year, less than half a year now. So, um, you know, take that with that grain of salt. But um, that's that's my feeling so far. All right, um, I'm almost home. So that's as far as I got today. I will, uh, you know, I'll try to do this uh, more frequently since I'm, I've gotten so many questions. Thank you um, for all of the questions and I, w I will get to them as soon as I can. Uh, thanks for watching and I will talk to you next time. All right, good night.